In this video, I am going to show you the key differences between nano and bulk material. Uh, if you look into the nano, so uh, there must be one dimension of a material is below 100 nanometer. So that material we call nano. Very, very simple. If you see a material whose one dimension is below 100 nanometer, for example, x axis, y axis, and z, z axis, so you can call that a nanomaterial, right? Uh, how about the bulk? The bulk means that uh, a material whose not a single side lies below 100 nanometer, so that we call bulk material, mean that is out of range of nano. So now let's go here and see this is basically a nano material. If you look into the scale here, so this is a nano here. You see here, so this means that uh, uh, if you see the small uh, wire here, so the dia or the radius, you can see it is uh, almost below 100 millimeter. So you can call this nano material. But if you look into this one, so the scale is in micron, and none of none of single dimension uh, is below 100 millimeter. So this is why we call bulk material. Now let's see the differences here, right? Uh, let's see first uh, the nanomaterials. So if you are talking about the pros and cons of a nanomaterial, so uh, it should be the reverse for a bulk material. So this means that in this video, when we discuss about the advantages of nanomaterial, so this means that uh, those advantages or the disadvantages of the bulk material, right? So let's first talk about the nano, right? The first and foremost thing is uh, in nanomaterial is high specific surface area. This is the key parameter, this is the key property of a nanomaterial. This means that meter square per gram. Uh, if you take a powder uh, nanomaterial and uh, for instance if I talk about graphene, so graphene is 1000 uh, meter square uh, per uh, gram. This means that if I take one gram of a graphene material and if I uh, lie it on the surface and spread it on the surface so it will cover 100 square meter in that side this means that uh, this if we suppose that this is uh, this one one side is 100 this one side is 100,000 meter one side 1000 meter another side 1000 meter so one gram of graphene uh, will aquify will cover uh, this much area so this is we call specific surface area okay so this is a good property uh, uh, up a nanomaterial uh, because of this uh, property we need small material we need small amount right uh, now uh, let's see the second effect is called quantum confinement effect this is also the the, the very very uh, important uh, uh, key characteristics of a nanomaterial that once we bring the material down to a certain uh, dimension so this effect uh, taking place this is mean a very small effect and this quantum effect uh, let's see what uh, changes occur in a material when we uh, achieve quantum confinement effect and let's see optical property you change the optical property for instance a material uh, absorb certain uh, radiation certain wavelength radiation or certain frequency like x-ray or uh, ultraviolet are visible and when we have this uh, effect so you can change this optical property right similarly electrical particles similarly magnetic properties so with the help of uh, this effect you can change the optical electrical and magnetic properties of a material nanomaterial right let's go to the third property of a nanomaterial smaller is the size lower is the material needed this one i explained that if we decrease the size of the material so we will require a less material because uh, we for instance if you are talking about solar light uh, absorption in solar cell right so uh, here we need a material to absorb uh, sunlight right so if we keep here bulk here let's suppose if we keep it bulk here so there is only uh, the top surface uh, exposed to the sunlight so the rest of the material is just useless <laughs> this is why we uh, bring the nano material uh, so that the nano material has a smaller surface area so it will expose to uh, uh, a large surface area 
and just uh, we bombard or shine the light and it will absorb and it will give us electron and those kind of stuff right so smaller the size lower the material weight this is very understood why if somebody asks you you need to give the example of uh, surface area meter square per gram just give the example okay so bulk uh, is uh, there it is inside the volume we, we don't need those stuff and we just need a surface we just need the surface activation energy and those kind of thing okay the last one is mechanical strength it's a very key point uh, the mechanical strength uh, is significantly increases is the size of a component make it making it decreases look this is a very uh, tricky point uh, let me give you the example of this uh, leaf right this is my cursor this is the leaf here okay this is the midriff and this is the leaf here right This is the leaf, right? So you just tell me uh, which part of the leaf is thicker and which part of the leaf is thinner. The midriff is thicker. This is we understood. The midriff is uh, very, very thick. thick. So uh, here it means that it requires more material, right? But if you look into the these boundaries, the periphery, the, these these uh, these, uh, these arteries or these veins, so these are uh, 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 thinner, right? Yeah, this is thinner. This is understood. These are thinner. Just you tell me which one is more uh, strong, uh, flexible, the midriff or the, 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 the boundary of the leaves in these areas. The boundaries, you see, mechanical strength significantly increases is the size of a component making it decrease. If we, here we uh, use less material, here we use a lot of material. So here we use a lot of material, so this means this uh, is not mechanically strong. The strength, mechanical strength mean uh, if you put some uh, a load or something, it will break. But here, it will not break. It will not break because we use less material. So when, you, when we use less material, so the, the mechanical strength is uh, higher or increases at a periphery. So this was all about the uh, difference between nano and bulk materials. Now you just count this stuff, for example, for bulk. Bulk has a, a low specific surface area, <laughs> it's very understood. If you have a block here, as I give the example, right? This is the bulk here, right? Like a, like a cube here. This is the bulk. And you just see the surface area, uh, this top surface area, surface area. Now you break this into four pieces, you increase almost four, four, not four, four, more than that. Increase more than that. If you further do, smash it, it make it smaller and smaller so you further uh, increase the surface area you decrease the size but you, you increase the surface area right and there is no quantum confining the effect in a bulk right so you cannot change these properties so you when you cannot change these properties you cannot give the desired uh, result in application right the third one is uh, larger the size uh, more the material need to experience to just like I give the example of midriff right so if you have larger uh, size here, so you need more material, you see here. And the fourth one is uh, the mechanical strength also uh, decreases uh, if we use a lot of material, right? If you use the material uh, smaller, so uh, less uh, the, the material, less material, so the, there is a more mechanical strength. So this was all about the uh, nano and bulk. Thanks for watching.